What's up, everybody? Jack here, and today I'm going to show you updates on the Nicaragua course because it is almost done, super, super close. And I'm actually about to leave back to the United States. One of my close friends is getting married, so I'm going to go there and see him get married. And I got to come up with a toast, which is going to be cool. Another chance to speak in front of people. Exciting, right? But I figured that I would show you the course so far. This is mostly going to be for those of you who are interested in course creation because there's a couple different tools that I've been using and services and I want to go over these so that you guys can make more professional courses faster and easily. Okay, so let's switch the view real quick. Alrighty, so what have we done so far? So in the previous video that I showed you, all that I did was set up the curriculum. I didn't record anything at all, right? So now you can see, oh look, there's still no introduction, but there's a second lecture, a third lecture, a fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. All of the ones that have this little icon have a video that's been uploaded. So normally what I'll do is just like in the previous video, I'll make a section, I'll make the title of the section, I'll add each lecture, and then I know, okay, I need to make a video about if you need to know Spanish to live in Nicaragua. And then I need to make a video about how to learn Spanish and some of the basics that are going to get you far living here in basic communication. And then I go through and I record those videos. So after I make this YouTube video, one, I'm going to be in a more video recording momentous mood, right? So then I will follow through and make these next couple videos and finish up this course. So you can see that the only ones I need to do are the introduction, this video about Uber alternatives, these videos about cost of food, the available restaurants, accessing ATMs, and about Spanish. And then some videos about quality of life and how to deal with some of the problems here, what to expect from the weather, and how to travel safely, how to handle your money in a way that's safe, um, the differences between driving here in Nicaragua versus in the United States. And that's it, right? And at, over time, I'm going to add sections to the course, um, just like I did with the dropshipping course. As I progress and as I learn more about Nicaragua, I will keep adding more to the course. And specifically what that's going to be is sections all about like, okay, this is what Managua looks like. Here are some famous places in Managua. Okay, this is what Leon looks like. Here are some places, more kind of like touristy stuff. Um, I'm going to add that to the course over time, but it's not going to launch with that information. It's going to launch with everything you need to know to live. So how does visas work? How does citizenship work? What exactly is cost of living? What do I pay for rent, internet, electricity, water? How is access to water? How is access to electricity? How do I get internet? Can I get internet as a foreigner? How do you find a place to rent? Can you rent a place as a foreigner? What process do you use to find a place to rent? How do you meet people? How do you do all of these things? That is what this course is going to launch with. It is focused specifically on people who want to at least learn what is different about Nicaragua and what it would be like to live there, what things you would need to know um, to kind of prepare. I'm trying to make this a crash course into living in Nicaragua. I'm thinking about like, okay, before I moved here to live, what did I think? What was I worried about? What was I scared of? Because the reality is, all the things that I was scared of before I lived here were completely irrelevant once I got here. And I understood, wow, these are all just preconceptions and they're fears that tons of people have, but they aren't actually real. In reality, there's different problems that you don't expect, right? And so that's what this course is about. So one of the things I want to show you from a course creation perspective. Um, you've seen how I went about, I made the curriculum for this course, I laid out the outline, I started recording video, but one thing I haven't talked to you about is using Canva. Um, because one thing I really like, I like it when each video in the course starts with like the name of the lecture, right? So what I did is I made all of these resources Here's all the raw files for the course. And then if we look in thumbnails, you can see all of these different thumbnails here. And so you can see here, 
This is the thumbnail for the ATM access lecture. This is the thumbnail for the cell phones lecture. This is the thumbnail for internet. And basically, each lecture starts with this for three seconds. Um, and this is mostly because the way Udemy courses work, uh, it, it's easy to think of them as courses that you take, but the reality is they're more like video playlists. People typically start a course at the beginning and click play, and Udemy is going to automatically go throughout the lessons. And you're actually never going to see the thumbnails of the video. And I think this makes it a little bit hard to keep track of what each video is about. Because you actually only see these titles if you are viewing Udemy in a certain way. So let's show you what that looks like. We're going to go to preview and preview as a student. And so this is what the course will look like to somebody taking the course. You can see that in the right here, they can navigate and pick which lecture they want to take. But that doesn't mean that most of them are actually going to do this. Only some people are going to look at this and skip certain parts and then go exactly where they want. Most people are going to click play right here and then they're going to click uh, full screen. One second. Now the so they're going to do that, right? And it's just going to, as soon as, let me make sure it's muted. One second. So they're going to do this, full screen it. And then as soon as it gets to the end here, look what happens. It briefly, for a second, says the title of the lecture, but then it just moves on, okay? And I didn't finish those. So you see how here, we finished one video, right? And then it just moved on to this part. Whereas here, if we get to the end and we finish, you see for like a couple seconds what the title of the next lecture is, and that's it. And it's in really small text. It's not super obvious. So one thing that I like to do um, that I actually haven't done in previous courses, but I'm doing in this course because I'm trying to constantly improve, is to uh, edit the videos so that all of them start with a thumbnail for three seconds. Um, this just gives a little tiny bit of time to make it clear, okay, this is this course. It gives you a bit more identity because you can play with the thumbnails and you can make them have themes, right? So for example, say that I wanted it to be more themed. I could have all of the beginning lectures be in green and then all of the middle lectures be in blue and then the final lectures could all be in red, right? And there's little things that you can do like this that are going to help your student be better able to conceptualize and understand the information, okay? So how do we create these thumbnails? It's actually incredibly easy. You can just get a subscription to Canva, and I will do it right now because this is literally how quick it is, okay? I'm gonna go to create a design, I'm gonna click on YouTube thumbnail, and now I'm thinking about, okay, I'm making a traveling thing, so what, what do I want? What, what, what image speaks to me? Typically what I do is I just look at this and I scroll down and, and I try and do it quickly because I want to look at all of these, only look at them for a second, and find one that stands out to me for whatever reason, right? Like right here, this one stood out to me. I'm going to keep going down. This one stands out to me. That one stands out to me. And then I just go with it, right? So let's say that I picked this one. I would click it, right? And then now I would just change this title to be like finding ATMs and then get rid of this, make this much bigger. So we're going to change the font to like 110 or 120. Okay. And so then I click download, click download and then done one. Okay. Now next we're going to do introduction, download, Download, done. That's literally all that you do. It's really, really fast. And Canva enables you to create some really cool looking thumbnails in just seconds. You can do it super, super fast. And as long as you have an active Canva account, then you're able to use these thumbnails for commercial purposes and whatever you want. Um, and it's pretty cheap. Like it costs like 
like 15 bucks a month or something like that. Maybe it's less, like 12 or $9. I think it depends on the package. But so now you guys understand. All right, I start out the course creation process by going through and identifying the outline. And then I think of, okay, what is the first video I can make? What am I most interested in? What do I have energy to make right now? It doesn't have to be the first video. It doesn't have to be the introduction. As you can see, I still haven't made the introduction to the course, despite the fact that I finished most of the other videos. And that's something that I want you to, to really think about because you can, you can start with the introduction and maybe you think it makes sense to start with the first lecture, then do the second lecture, then do the third. But really, you want to start with what will give you the most momentum, what you feel the most confident about. Out of your entire course, out of every single lecture that you've identified, what is the one that you think right now you can make the best, okay? If it's the first lecture or the introduction, okay, go to town. But from my experience, it's usually another video. And if I think about making the whole course, I feel insecure, I feel scared, I feel like, wow, that's so much work. But if I just think about, okay, what is one video I can make? Boom, I make that video. And then by the end of the video, I'm like, huh, oh, I can make another video. And also, because I just recorded internet access, then I'm like, huh, it kind of makes sense now to talk about getting a cell phone. I'm gonna record that, so I recorded that one. And then I was like, oh, you know what makes sense to talk about next is the cost of rent and finding that. And then when I recorded a video about rent, I was outside in the streets showing how to like walk in the streets in Nicaragua and find a place to rent. And then I was like, oh shit, there's taxis passing by me. Why don't I, I could, this is a great opportunity to talk about how to use taxis because I'm in the street. I can show exactly what you do and I can talk about it, right? So I tend to focus on what video will give me the most momentum. Because if you start with a video that you don't feel very confident in, then chances are you're gonna record it, maybe you won't like it too much, you won't develop that momentum. Whereas if you start with a video that you just know, okay, this one's easy, I can do it, no problem, you're gonna build this momentum. And then afterwards, you're gonna build another video, and another video, and another video. And before you know it, you're gonna have half of your course done but you didn't even think about it. It's not like you sat down and you were like, okay, I'm gonna record half of my course. No, 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 that's scary, right? That's insecurity promoting because that means like making a significant amount of content. That's a time commitment, right? Whereas if I just identify the one video that I know I can make, I can do that and then I just think of each chunk. I'm like, okay, I did this, so now I'm thinking about this, so I'm gonna make that video. And then I move on and move on and move on and move on. And before I know it, I've tricked myself into making an entire course, okay? So now you guys understand how to use Canva to easily create thumbnails for your courses. You also understand how to lay your course out, but make sure that you don't worry too much about the order that you record it in. It's perfectly acceptable, and I think it's better to record in a different order than the person actually watches it in. Just make sure that you're referencing everything properly. Like if I'm talking about finding a place to rent and I say, hey, in the next video, we're gonna talk about what it's like to be a foreigner in Managua, that doesn't make sense because the next video isn't being a foreigner in Managua, even if I recorded it that way. So in general, you want to avoid referencing other videos in the course. Um, especially once you publish the course, you're going to see, hey, some, it might actually make more sense to the student if I change the order because this makes more sense to be here and that makes more sense to be here. Why did I start with this lecture when I could have started with that lecture? If you reference what lecture is next in your course, then you remove the flexibility because you're gonna be like, hey, now that we've talked about finding a place to rent, next we're gonna talk about getting a cell phone. That means I have to have the getting a cell phone video after finding a place to rent, but maybe I won't want that in the future. So what's better is to say something like this at the end. Hey, now that we've talked about finding a place to rent, we're ready to move on to the next lecture and I'll see you there, right? If I say that, it gives me the flexibility and the freedom to put whatever lecture I want afterwards. And that's something that's really important because it's true that you saying what the next lecture is, like a little bit will help them form a concept, 
but it's at the cost of not being able to reorder things later. And right now, as you publish the course, it will not be in the right order. You will only know what the perfect order is once the course has been published, once you've had some time, you've rewatched it, you've listened to what your students say, you've listened to their questions and all of that, okay? So now you guys understand how to make a layout. You understand not to waste too much time on thinking you have to record it one, two, three, four, five. Focus on what gives you the most momentum. You understand how to make thumbnails with Canva. Now let's talk about making the thumbnail for your course. Because guess what? You don't even have to do it. Udemy will literally do it for you, okay? So all you need to do is go to this course landing page here. Now you're gonna scroll down and you're going to go to this section. You can see here that the course image for this course is a map and it shows Nicaragua which is fitting, right? Makes sense, considering the course is about living in Nicaragua. Might make sense to see where Nicaragua is in a map, right? However, it is a little bit weird here because Udemy made me this course design, but if you look right here, you can see that if you create your image, it must meet our course image quality standards, right? Important guidelines, yada, 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 no text in the image. And then look at the image they made me. It's filled with text. <laughs> So I think in this case, it's literally a picture of a map. So in their heads, it's not like you're putting text on the image. That's the thing that they don't recommend. You, you, on Udemy courses, they don't really like it if you have text on the image. Whereas in a YouTube thumbnail, there's always text in the image, right? So they're very different in that way. Um, your course image is more like the identity and the color scheme associated with your course. This is how you can start to get people to think, okay, that's that course. It's like the color of the door. The door isn't where you learn, it's the thing you walk through to learn, right? So that's how Udemy approaches it. And this is exactly what you need to do if you want to get Udemy to make an image for you, just like I did. And it's super easy. All you do is you click on this, get your free image, and then you can see they're like, hey, our images convert better, just so you know. You scroll down and then you pick. Do you want illustrated like this? Or do you want it to be photographic like this? Or do you want it to be a combination? I typically use combination. I like combination. Um, but depending on what you want, you could use illustrated or photographic. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put in the current title of your course. Keep in mind, the person creating this design is going to think about this, right? So my title was living in Nicaragua in Latin America. So that's why they made this, because they saw the title, okay? So they made something relevant to your course. So then you wanna give them more information, right? What is your course about? They need to know this, not so that they can advertise it or students, but so that they can make an image that is relevant to the subject matter of your course, okay? So then you're gonna write that there, and then you're gonna put in your course ID, okay? And you don't, you don't have to publish the course before this, right? Like right now, this course isn't published yet, but it still has an ID. And this is the ID right here. When you're in your course, go to the udemy.com part, and then copy this number, and then just paste the number right there. That's all that you have to do, okay? And then here where it says, is your course currently under review? click no, because your course is in draft mode, right? I haven't submitted my course for review yet. Then you're gonna put in your email address. In my case, that's my email address. And then you click this. And then between two and five business days later, you're going to get an email from Udemy that looks like this. Right here, see it says Udemy support. Click here, your course image is now ready. Okay, so then we have a link exactly to the image. Boom, and then all you do is copy the image or, sa or save the image as, and then you go over to the course landing page, and then you click upload file, and then click crop. 
okay? That's really important because if you don't click crop, it's not going to save it. And it's a bit confusing because you're not actually cropping the image. You're just accepting the cropped rate of the image. So it, if after you upload it, you have a moment to change the size of the image and crop it if you want to, or you can just click crop to continue. If you don't do that, it's not going to save, okay? So you have to upload it and then click crop. That's what saves it. Otherwise, if you don't click crop, then even if you click save up here, every time you come back to course image, it's gonna be blank, okay? So now you guys understand the course creation process. You understand how to use Canva to create slideshows and media to be used in your course. You understand how to get Udemy to design a course for you. And you also understand exactly what my course is and what I'm working on, all right? So if you're watching this video, the course is probably already out. So check it out in the description if you wanna get it. It's 40 bucks and it is all about having a life in Nicaragua and how exactly to do that, what emotions you're gonna go through, how to find a place to rent, how to get citizenship, all of this information is in this course. Right now, obviously, as you can see, it's not published, but it's getting published within a couple days. So by the time the majority of you watching this actually see this video, it will already be out, all right? And I have plenty more courses available for you guys. If you want to check them out, check out my Udemy profile or look in the description of this YouTube video. You can find links to all my other courses. I have a course about screen recording and live streaming. This shows you exactly how to make videos just like I'm making right now using this software, OBS. You see how we can switch back and forth like this? Kind of cool, right? Super easy. And I explain exactly how to do it in this course. Then I have another course that's all about creating and monetizing a YouTube channel. This course has all the information you need to create YouTube videos, and it shows you different strategies that you can use to earn money from the YouTube videos and talks to you about how to do SEO and how to get your videos to actually show up in search results. After that, we have another course about drop shipping on eBay. I no longer drop ship on eBay, but I learned a buttload about it. I'm really well connected in the drop shipping scene, and so there's a lot of information. I still have this course available because it's relevant to tons of people who are new into drop shipping and want just one place that has loads of information about the drop shipping scene. If you want any of these, just look in the description of this YouTube video and you will find them. And last pitch, if you want, I offer consulting services and I also do paid hourly work if you want some kind of virtual assistance help. Consulting with me costs $40 an hour and you go to calendly, calendly.com slash Jack Dermot Pittman, okay? And from here, you're gonna be able to book a call with me. <laughs> Typically, the consultations are just 30 minutes. So it's $40 an hour, but typically it's only 30 minutes, so it's actually just a $20 call, okay? I also do hourly work. If you're interested in hiring me for a short-term project or something that you think I would be relevant for, um, if you're interested in that, send me an email at jackdermotpittman at gmail.com. My rate for hourly work is $20 per hour, okay? All right, guys, I really appreciate you taking the time to check this video out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.